Happy Juneteenth. I'm really excited to be here this morning. My name is Ken James, and I have the privilege of serving as Director of Inclusion for the Grand Rapids Chamber. On behalf of the Chamber and Warner Norcross and Judd LLP, I am both excited and thankful you chose to dedicate to an hour of your day to diversity, equity, and inclusion as we celebrate freedom around Juneteenth. Today, we will hear from Dr. Sandra Upton, Vice President of Global Diversity Practice for the Cultural Intelligence Center, and Paul Doyle, Doyle founder and CEO of Inclusive Performance Strategies. Our goal is for you to leave with a greater understanding of the history and significance of Juneteenth, in addition to the importance of celebrating it within your organization. Juneteenth is an observance of ending, the ending of slavery in the United States. The holiday links back to June 19, 1865, two and a half years after the Emancipation Proclamation. It was at that point Union soldiers arrived in Galveston, Texas, with the news the Civil War had ended and that the slaves were indeed free. It has been over 155 years since the last slaves were freed. We cannot lose sight of the impact slavery has had and continues to have on this country, and we will continue collaborating within our communities and community members to take actions that improves and makes changes, to improve and make changes for the betterment of everyone. Before I introduce our speakers, I would like to invite Rick Baker and Doug Dozeman to join me center screen. Rick serves as president and CEO of the Grand Rapids Chamber, and Doug represents Warner Norcross and Judd LLP as managing partner. Please join me and virtually welcome Doug and Rick center stage. Thank you, Ken, and thank you everyone for joining us. In principle and in practice, the Grand Rapids Chamber delivers in the value and the power believes in the, power, in the value and the power of diversity, equity, and inclusion. While we always strive to deliver programming through the business lens, we also know education is the foundation to advancing DEI in our community. By promoting opportunities to learn about the lesser known and often untaught pieces of American history, we hope to serve as a catalyst for individual and organizational diversity, equity, and inclusion journeys across West Michigan. We are thankful to partner with Warner Cross and Judd today to deliver this program. With that, I would like to introduce Doug Dozeman, managing partner of Warner Norcross and Judd. Hello, uh, I'm Doug Dozeman, and as Rick said, I'm the managing partner here at Warner Norcross and Judd. I'm very pleased to welcome you all here today for the today's event celebrating Juneteenth. I want to thank Rick and Ken and the entire chamber team for their partnership in sponsoring this event. And I also want to give a shout out to our diversity, equity, and inclusion team for planning this event with the chamber. And finally, I want to thank each of you for taking the time to take part in today's program. It is important that we recognize Juneteenth, understand its place in our nation's history, and help increase our understanding of the holiday's importance, both to our African American community and to all of us with our shared experience as Americans. Juneteenth hasn't received a lot of attention in the past, although that's changing as we speak, as uh, just yesterday we heard the news that the federal government is uh, recognizing Juneteenth as a federal holiday. But many of us don't know a lot about the background and history um, and the significance of Juneteenth, Juneteenth. So I'm looking forward to hearing from our speakers today, Dr. Sandra Upton and Paul Doyle, who are gonna explain the history of Juneteenth, the legacy of the people who were enslaved in this country and how to honor and engage with that legacy. Juneteenth is a celebration of freedom, a time to recognize how far we've come and how far we have yet to go. Our hope is that by better understanding this legacy, we'll be better able to be allies in the struggle for racial justice and inclusion for all of the people in our community. Each of you is critically important in adding to a productive dialogue on these issues. And we need to understand each other to have constructive conversations and ultimately lead to action and to change. So on behalf of the Warner team, welcome to this important event 
and thank you again for attending. Ken? Doug, Rick, thank you so very much for sharing those words and welcoming everyone to our webinar. Let's get down to engagement so we can get to the, our featured speakers today. As a friendly reminder, here's a few tips to maximize your virtual experience today. You will have an opportunity to submit questions throughout the presentation using the chat or Q&A functions. Both can be found at the toolbar at the bottom of your screen. Our speakers will address as many questions as time allows while during the moderated Q&A session. We will be launching a poll to maximize our engagement uh, throughout this uh, uh, opportunity because we want you to be fully engaged. And also keep in mind that if there are any questions at all, you can find the Grand Rapids Chamber in the chat, email them or uh, message them your questions and we have people standing by to assist. So let me uh, first pull up our first poll question, if you would, and this is just to, to get you engaged. So if you all would take a moment to please describe your level of familiarity with Juneteenth. And I'm gonna pause just for a moment to give everyone a chance to take this poll and we'll share the results with you in just a few minutes. Without further ado, let's meet today's subject matter experts. Dr. Sandra Upton is Vice President of Global Diversity Practices for the Cultural Intelligence Center. In this role, she is responsible for providing leadership and expertise on diversity, equity, and inclusion matters for CQC clients across the globe. Dr. Upton has over 25 years of experience training and consulting with businesses, educational institutions, governmental agencies, and nonprofits from around the globe. She is also the subject matter expert for the center's work in unconscious bias and has led the center's unconscious bias certification program across the globe. After you hear from Dr. Upton, we will also hear from Paul Doyle, who is the founder and CEO of Inclusive Performance Strategies. He applies over 30 years of management experience to help organizations enhance their performance through inclusive work and service environments. By understanding how to embrace the cultures, values, and behaviors of a diverse workforce, Paul helps organizations maintain the competitive edge needed for success in today's rapidly changing global economy market. So before we hear from Sandra, let's take a quick look at our poll results. And I'll pause just for a moment for people to see where we're at with this as an, organ, uh, as an entity. And we'll do this. Dr. Sandra Upton, thank you for being here. The floor is yours. All right, thank you so much, Ken, uh, and thank all of you for putting on uh, this really important uh, event conversation. Really excited to be here with peer and colleague Paul Doyle. And uh, while I'll be sharing a few comments, I'm really excited to hear his thoughts on this topic as well. Um, but as, as Ken mentioned, I'm with the Cultural Intelligence Center and been with them for several years and uh, really leading our work around diversity, equity, and inclusion. And then I'm also a board member with the NIA Center, which is a nonprofit organization here in Grand Rapids uh, that is intended to create a world-class African-American cultural center. And I'm gonna talk a little bit about that towards the end of my comments since it's a, a wonderful opportunity for, for those of you that are listening in to, to be allies to this really important work. But Ken, I thought, did a great job um, in his introduction highlighting uh, what Juneteenth is um, and sort of, you know, the implications of it today. But what you can see here on the screen is a summary of sort of three major events that took place uh, back in the 1800s. When we think about Juneteenth, the reason it's called Juneteenth, it's because it's the combination of the month of June and uh, the 19th of June. Um, so you bring those two together. But uh, in the summary, it's a day to commemorate the emancipation of enslaved Black people in the U.S. Um, and in particular, uh, the event that happened in Galveston, Texas. So again, if you look on the screen here, you'll see that back in September of uh, 1862, that was when President Lincoln actually signed the Emancipation Proclamation. So that was the proclamation to say that slavery was uh, abolished. Um, that Emancipation Proclamation didn't actually become law until a few months later, January 1st of 1863. So a few months went by 
where people were still uh, enslaved for sure. Uh, but then th the big point that we are really focusing on today is that uh, the people in Texas and in particular uh, in Galveston, Texas, they did not hear and learn that they were free until June 19 of 1865. So two and a half years later, uh, they learned that they were actually free. Um, and it's interesting because when you think about that date, you know, it is a really important date. It's, it's why we are celebrating today. Um, but it's not as simple as that day everybody became free and then all of a sudden they were really free. <laughs> um, and even as we fast forward, fast forward to today, uh, are we really free? And so I'll talk about that in a bit. But even though that happened in, in 1865, on the 19th of June, it, it's important to understand that in that two and a half year period, there were still a quarter of a million people who were still enslaved. Uh, and then even when you fast forward to the 19th, when the announcement was, was made, you can believe that it was not made um, without resistance. And so people still had to go through that whole process of, yes, you are officially free, you, you've got your papers, but you know the process of people actually becoming free and that whole transition right, to having lives where they were not um, under slavery and, and, and having a slave owners, that was an absolute process. So we didn't have this situation where on June 19, 1865, we, we clicked our heels and everything was, was better. And, and I think that's really important to understand that. But in a nutshell, these were the three major events that led us up to this, this celebration of freedom. And that's really what it does represent, this idea that, that slavery was abolished. And you know, again, when you tie it to history and you look at the fact that in, in just a couple of weeks, we'll be celebrating the 4th of July, uh, you can understand why uh, many African-Americans, if not all, don't get overly excited about the 4th of July. And, and I will say my family, we do, we, we celebrate and um, but we, we do that within the context of, of fully understanding that in many ways, uh, you know, July 4th means very little to us. If anything, it's a, it's a painful reality of our past because we were not, my people, we were not free. And in fact, you look at 86 years later, 86 years later um, was when African-Americans were free. And so um, even as you think about and celebrate the 4th of July, not to put a damper on, on anyone's celebration, but just acknowledging um, why perhaps some of your peers and, and friends of color may not be as excited about you as uh, about the holiday as you are um, for, for those very reasons that I just explained. You know, everybody is, is pretty excited about the news that just came out a few days ago. Congress approved the bill to make Juneteenth a federal holiday. That is very much a good thing. You know, there's lots of conversation now. Um, I've heard uh, just from peers and colleagues and, and watching the news, lots of conversation and debate about what does this actually now mean for us? Um, but I think it is, it, is, it is a big deal. And I think it is something that's important uh, to pause on and celebrate because what that decision, that approval means for a lot of people is just the acknowledgement, right, that that happened um, and that there are still implications of what happened today. Um, but it's sort of the acknowledgement. You, you hear people talk about America's original sin, you know, of, of slavery. And so the fact that this is now officially a federal holiday, it adds that element of just the acknowledgement. And one thing I talk about all the time is that part of why we have such a hard time moving forward as a society and as organizations and as individuals working together across cultures is that we don't knowledge. So it's hard to talk about things and move forward when you don't even take that first step to say this happened. And uh, while it may feel like it was a long time ago, the implications of that are significant yet for today. So again, the decision to, to make this a federal holiday is important because of just that acknowledgement. You know, um, I don't want to, to, to sound negative in any way, um, but I do want to, to highlight the realities of, of what happened and, and what it means for us today and the opportunities that we have as individuals and as businesses and as leaders to continue to move things forward, in particular here in Grand Rapids. Um, but we all know that while slavery was abolished, we know that throughout history, uh, one of the challenges is that it was replaced with other forms of oppression. 
uh, whether that was Jim Crow laws, you know, um, and just some of the modern day discrimination um, and issues around race that we still see today. You know, the whole George Floyd uh, and many others, that whole situation, uh, those situations, those critical situations, um, we realize that you know, we still have a lot more work to do um, and that we have a responsibility. You have a responsibility as, as business leaders, as community leaders to ensure that, that within our organizations, we're not replacing um, you know, what we got rid of with other forms of oppression, even in our organizations. And, and there's no shortage of data uh, to show that while we've made some progress, um, that there is much opportunity to grow. And, and we can pretty much dissect any discipline, whether that's healthcare, whether that's, you know, the real estate industry, whether that is, you know, business in general, whether that's in education, we still see uh, data points that show uh, significant disparities and significant uh, inequities uh, when it comes to people of color and in particular, African-Americans. So not to be negative uh, and, and not to uh, suggest that we've not made any progress, but we do have to keep in front of us the realities uh, that we perhaps are not as far along as we would like to think we are. Um, and then there's still resistance you know, again, you look at uh, even with the, uh, you know, the, uh, Juneteenth, how much resistance there was, even on the day that people were told that they were free. Um, you look at um, even the decision to make it a federal holiday. That was something that has been fought for for decades. No exaggeration. So it took decades to even get the, the, the federal government to get Congress to, to decide. And again, we're glad that they did. So not to harp on the negative, but the, I just wanna emphasize the fact that any time we make progress, there is this resistance and we have a responsibility to be allies so that we can minimize that resistance and so that we can move things along. And, and I highlight and I know that, I know that um, um, you're going to hear a little bit from Paul about the business case for this, but there are, you know, there are businesses that have been doing things not just this year, but in, in past years. I'm sure many of you have heard about the work that Nike is doing. I believe all of their stores are closed today and the work that Amazon, uh, the commitment that Amazon has made and organizations like NPR. And so it's a good thing that, that there's that acknowledgement. And I certainly encourage you in your own organization to acknowledge this day uh, by doing things that are meaningful and doing things that really challenge, uh, that educate your employees, but then also challenge them to become allies so that we can keep moving things forward. Um, I did briefly, uh, before I wrap up with my comments, just wanted to highlight um, the fact that I have the privilege, uh, in, in addition to my day job at the Cultural Intelligence Center, I have the privilege of serving on the board with the NIA Center, uh, which is, uh, NIA Center stands for, it's a Swahili, Swahili word uh, that stands for purpose. It's one of the seven principles of Kwanzaa. Um, and we've been um, around for a few years now, but we are working uh, as a team to uh, launch uh, Grand Rapids' first world-class African-American cultural center. So not a museum, but it's a cultural center. And uh, we're excited uh, about the progress that we are making. But when you think about the work that we do, um, we really see ourselves as sort of a platform uh, or a clearinghouse of sort to bring together important individuals with important topics that have a direct impact on the African-American community. Um, and then we wanna create dialogue and solutions to help continue to move uh, the African-American community forward. And you can see on the screen that there are six areas of focus, arts and entertainment, DI and racial equity, education, entrepreneurship and wealth building, healthcare, and then research. And so we do a host of events throughout the year um, that center around one of or a combination of these topics that you see here with the intent to acknowledge the past um, contributions that African Americans have made to the Grand Rapids community. We use that uh, as an opportunity to talk about the current challenges that are facing the African-American community as it relates to these six areas of focus. And then most importantly, we use that opportunity to talk about what are some of the things that we can continue to do to propel the African-American community forward um, so that we become 
um, continue to be a, a valued and respected uh, part of the Grand Rapids community. Uh, we're excited that we just hired our new executive director, Sierra Hatfield, literally just joined us as the executive director about a week ago, uh, but she comes to us from Kentucky and comes with uh, quite a bit of experience in working with nonprofit organizations and has a lot of policy background, but we're excited about her leadership. And really, I, I share this with you um, shamelessly to, to encourage you if you're if you're trying to think about, okay, so now I know a little bit more about Juneteenth. Now I know uh, how important uh, this day is and what it represents, but I also recognize that we do have a lot more work to do. So I wanna be a part of that and I wanna be an ally. So this is one opportunity uh, for you to be an ally. And so I encourage you to check out the website and uh, different ways that you can get involved from becoming a volunteer to uh, making a contribution and or even just uh, having conversations with us about ways in which we can partner to do some great things in the community. So I'm going to, I'm guessing I am close to my time. I can see it in your eyes, Ken. So I'm going to wrap up and uh, pass it back to Ken or Paul. Thank you. Dr. Upton. Thank you so much for sharing that information. Um, uh, Paul will be coming to you in just a moment. Um, I do wanna share with anyone that's tuning in today. Uh, if you're not aware, there is a Grand Rapids African-American Health Institute in our community, which Paul Doyle chairs, GRAHI, uh, if you're familiar with that organization. We have the foundation for a world-class African-American cultural center the NIA Center, which uh, Dr. Upton uh, had just uh, highlighted. And we'd like to, uh, I think she's in attendance, but we wanna welcome Sierra uh, to our community. And uh, I've had the pleasure to, to meet her and we're looking forward to getting engaged um, there. But Paul, um, talking about the business case, and, uh, and you know, I want you to, to kind of talk through, you know, the significance of the contributions of the descendants of slaves that have made to this country and how we can look through that through a business lens. So please uh, take center stage here on our screen and the floor is yours. Thank you, Ken. I uh, appreciate uh, the opportunity to partic participate in this uh, panel today, this event. Um, it, it's definitely a monumental moment that we're experiencing as a country. Um, <clears throat> I also like to thank the chamber for just putting this, Rick, uh, under your leadership, putting this event on uh, Warner North Ch Cross and Jug, Doug and, and Mendes, I appreciate your leadership there. And the, the honor of, of, of being able to be co-presenting uh, with Dr. Sandra Upton um, is, is, is a moment that I, I, will, I will cherish. So I, I appreciate everything she shared. Uh, she definitely covered the bases um, in regards to the significance of, of, of this uh, important uh, historic uh, moment that we're celebrating and that we're recognizing. You know, for my presentation, uh, I just want to basically uh, kind of just focus on some, some key areas in regards to this business case and uh, really focusing on and presenting uh, the influence of employers uh, that they have and being able to uh, recognize and support this significant holiday. Uh, that we now have. Um, and I'm gonna do that by focusing on several areas. Uh, we, we know that a lot of organizations are intentionally trying to actively foster an, an inclusive organization and trying to become more, more diverse. But this is a, a, a moment in which um, you, you can take that to another level uh, and beyond uh, just reflecting the community you serve. But now it's time for you to reflect who you really are as an organization and how your values, how your brand um, is totally aligned with understanding and embracing the black experience in this country. Um, organizations and companies, as we all know, are uh, Fortune 500 companies are, are jumping on board. Many companies are declaring holidays, doing significant things as, as Sandra had, had communicated. Um, but there's still corporate leaders who are concerned about cost when it comes to giving people a paid holiday uh, and, and working, uh, instead of working, helping their companies make money. This is, this is the differentiating factor here. Um, we're talking about a holiday that is recognizing the emancipation from unpaid labor 
uh, that significantly built this country. Um, think about that. We can't begin to, to try to quantify. I know there's been research what the significance of slave labor has contributed in a, in a, in a dollar sense uh, to the buildup of our economy and this country as a whole. And here we are at this point in time in our country with the opportunity to recognize that, to inform our communities, to bring it to the forefront um, and having the courage to embrace the truth of the, that's within the history of our country. You know, companies uh, that are that really um, can can understand this uh, realize also that uh, employees uh, who are looking for work in certain and companies are just using a lot of discernment and they're discerning the company's values, what their what their intentionally what their strategic priorities are. Um, and making decisions whether they join those companies or not based on that. It's not just the money anymore. And I think that's been contributed by what we've just experienced over the last several years um, in which uh, the inequities and everything that has been uh, surfaced system, systematically and structurally has really put people in a critical thinking mode of where, where do they stand? And, and how do they align themselves with an organization that embraces what they stand for? Um, it's time for companies really uh, to understand that customers are doing the same thing. Customers want to know and they're putting their dollars and their money in, in, in regards to companies that they buy from or, or interact with based on a company's brand and how that brand aligns with embracing the value of what all individuals have contributed to this country and especially in this area of Juneteenth today. And uh, that's, that's basically the bottom line is that the communities and individuals want to know that you stand with them, especially the black community and black employees within your organizations, that you stand with them and, and that you regard not just what they're bringing today, but the history that they bring with them. Um, my next area of focus I want to I want to present is the market space and, and hit on that and and again Sandra did an awesome job of, of connecting to that. You know the fact that you know many of us have benefited from what we call the free free economy. Still today, um, there's a, a a lot of us who um, are not benefiting and the inequities that have uh, been surfaced uh, through the pandemic has shown even a, a how thin that line is for African-Americans to sustain uh, an economic uh, presence within the landscape, a strong economic presence. And uh, with that said, we need to take this opportunity to look at the fact that um, just being able to sponsor or, or and, and which is very appreciated and to be able to contribute and pledge to certain activities and initiatives are very, very important. But we are now at a point where embracing the true uh, uh, essence or, or meaning of the inclusive economy is essential to the future growth of our nation. And what do we mean by that? We mean that when we look at the past and the things that have, that have surfaced and people are just now learning about whether Black Wall Street or Chocolate City or Harlem and all these different areas that, that post Juneteenth were established um, and there was intentional redlining and certain uh, regulation legislative uh, moves that limited their ability to grow and then the, the, the intentional effort to actually violently uh, destroy them. Um, here we have the opportunity now to rise up um, and employers and businesses have the ability to leverage their leadership and their, and their influence to lead this inclusive economy concept here within our own area of West Michigan and across the country. This is where we have the opportunity to address the inequities that we know are, are prevalent uh, across our communities. So the market space and how we look at diversifying our spin, our minority, embracing minority vendors is part of that spin and creating that pipeline and that channel of wealth 
that many white uh, families and, and, and individuals of our country have been able to experience over, over the history of this country. Now we have an opportunity to continue to enhance that and to recognize the importance of that for all individuals in our country, especially the African-American community. My other area that I would like to focus on that I feel is, is, is very key and I think uh, we all will, will agree is our community cultural climate. And I feel that you know, many sectors of our community have the ability to influence that, whether that's education, the legal system, judicial, faith-based organizations by what we do and also by what we don't do. Um, but employees and organizations can leverage their, their, their brand, their leadership to express the importance of Juneteenth and help neutralize the level of polarization that has been nurtured over the past several years, politically especially. Um, it's time for us to build that bridge and to be able to create platforms of trust that gives us the ability to safe space to, to face our truths um, and with courage and understand that it's by doing that that we can reborn or re-energize ourselves um, to be able to move forward together. Um, our communities and where we congregate and how we build intentional relationships is key to this. Uh, we cannot stop dialoguing. We cannot stop uh, you know, engaging each other. Um, and that's gonna take all sides. And Sandra's point of becoming an ally or creating allyship is essential to that. Uh, African Americans aren't looking just for individuals to empathize with their experience and their history. They're looking for people who will come to the plate and, and with them and stand next to them to actively combat, combat the current today oppressive and, and racism that is, that is becoming more of, of an issue even every day. It's been an issue and has continued to be an issue for us today. So, you know, with that, our, our companies where people work, uh, where they look to support their families, but they spend most of their time, employers have the ability to be able to, to present themselves as, as a key stakeholder, as a key ally. Um, it's also important that we have this opportunity, as Sandra also pointed out, that we do celebrate uh, 4th of July, but this is a holiday that actually uh, recognizes that the country has embraced full freedom for everyone post 4th of July. So to be able to have, again, employers be able to present that uh, as part of the knowledge and, and information they want to be, uh, uh, their employees and their team members to be aware of, uh, can do a lot to con to changing community culture and climate. And I think we all have a responsibility and I believe uh, the corporate leaders and employers and everybody realizes that. With that said, um, the final area that I want to talk about is, is the area of equity. And you know we have the tendency of looking at diversity, equity, inclusion through a lens of scarcity versus abundance. You know, the tendency for, or for individuals or organizations or, or different constituencies to say, what do I lose versus what do I, I gain by embracing uh, this area of inclusive growth? And we have the opportunity to demonstrate um, by, again, recognizing this significant day, but also by continuously what we do after this day to be able to foster that inclusive growth is essential to changing the mindset and the lens of scarcity versus abundance. Um, we can become more great together uh, as, as a country, as communities um, within, especially within West Michigan. Um, the historical uh, perspective of understanding that slavery was the key uh, resource and African-Americans and, and, and slaves were a commodity that built this country is, is, is a fact. Um, we, we know that uh, today um, we have the opportunity to not just you know, embrace that history, but also use it and leverage it to be able to 
understand what we can do together moving forward. Um, I feel as, as, uh, uh, as I reflect on my grandfather who um, lived to be 102 years old, and I know others have maybe heard this story. Uh, he uh, came and immigrated to this country from Port of Spain, Trinidad, um, after individuals who, if you can, are familiar with the transatlantic slave trade uh, encyclopedia, many from West Africa came via uh, through uh, the Caribbean. But he came here and lost his eyesight working on the Panama Canal, was able to uh, learn how to read Braille, and then was able to uh, acquire a, a newsstand in the middle of Manhattan in New York City. He ran that newsstand until he was 96 years old. Um, his ability uh, to do that and engage and trust individuals, um, especially on Madison Avenue with all these executives, was something I, 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 I admired as I went and helped him disperse his newspapers uh, during, during rush hour when I was in, uh, in middle school. And then understanding that the richness of this really came to light to me when he passed away. Um, and the executives from Madison Avenue were coming in and giving and expressing their sympathies uh, to our family, uh, individuals that we didn't know. And I say this story because that's the power that we have when we come together, when we trust and we share with each other um, and give all of us the opportunity, the equitable opportunity to establish a platform in which we can contribute to the society. Um, it's the richness of our humanity that we need to be good stewards of. And I'm hoping that today um, is, is another uh, beginning to take this to another level we have a lot of work to do, um, as uh, Dr. Umpton has expressed, but this is about progressive improvement, not postponed perfection. Um, there's no quick check the box move to changing what we've accumulated over time in history. This is a journey and it's gonna take all of us to progressively move forward. And I'm excited about what we're doing here today and I'm excited about the opportunities, organizations and employers uh, uh, within our communities can take and moving this forward. And um, I'm looking forward to us really showing who we really are. It's beyond the right thing to do. It's now to the point of us defining who we are. So thank you. I want to end that. I know I want to get it to some questions here, Ken, and um, be able to contribute further. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Dr. Upton will invite you back. Uh, center screen here. Closing on that personal story, uh, it meant a lot to me. Uh, so thank you uh, so much for that and, um, and just calling attention to uh, both of you shared some things that resonated with me. But to our viewing audience, we're now at the part of the program where we can all be a part. I think it's more than 170 of us on this call right now. And uh, you have an opportunity to ask our esteemed panelists questions. You can do that through the chat feature. Uh, we have about 20 minutes here. To, to have this conversation and, and some questions. Um, before we um, head into the questions, uh, just a couple of things, reflections for myself. One, thanks again for being here. I did have takeaways from each of your presentations to, um, as well, but I do want this to be Q&A, but I would love for it to be a chat as well. And uh, I respect each of you as individuals. I respect each of you as professionals. Um, and I know we interact, interact in the business community but my first question uh, is just something, and it's your opinion. There is no right or wrong answer. I, and I will start by being transparent. I, for one, uh, am happy that now we can acknowledge Juneteenth as a, as a holiday. But even since that was signed yesterday by our president, and then uh, since that time, our governor has actually signed something into, into um, action as well. There has been some conversations that um, maybe the Congress should have looked at reparations first or banning chokeholds for it first or anything. Um, so again, I think this is a step in the right direction. I think those other conversations should continue, but I love where you feel comfortable sharing your opinions about was this the, the best thing that Congress could have done nationally first or should we have looked at something else? Either, and whoever wants to go first. We can go ahead, Paul, it's fine. No, I, 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 I agree. I mean, you know, 
there's a lot of things that could that we we could have done. I, I guess to with the fact that we're celebrating uh, this and bringing this to the forefront, I think we have the opportunity of leverage leveraging this as in supporting the case for all those other changes we're talking about, whether it's reparations or changing of things that are, is oppressing uh, the black community. Um, and, and it comes to my point, and I believe Sandra agrees with this, that again, this is a significant point to celebrate, but there's so much more work to do. And the fact that what individuals say, well, gee, that was then, this is now. And you know, I wasn't part of that, I'm here now. You know, okay. The fact is, is that our history influences where we are today. So, you know, for us to be able to say that history that you benefited from is a history that did not give us the opportunity to benefit from. And therefore we're, we're looking at how can we now create this equitable landscape for all of us to be able to contribute to, to this society. Yeah, I would agree 100% with what Paul said. And I would just add that, you know, certainly there are so many pressing issues that um, that need to be dealt with. And it's, it's not to say that those can't be dealt with concurrently. So I'm optimistic that those conversations are happening and, and, and some of those other bills are will be making their way through soon. Uh, I do know that, um, again, everything is such a process and there's a resistance. So even, you know, as we celebrate you know, Juneteenth becoming a federal holiday. Remember, they've been fighting for this for decades. <laughs> so it, it's not like they just decided last week we want to do this and it's going to go through with, you know, flying colors. So everything is, is, again, such a process and there's such resistance. And so I do think we should pause and celebrate this. And as Paul suggested, let's leverage that and and I think for those who are on the call, I know there are many business leaders on the call. You don't have to wait until the next legislature. I mean, we all want other important things to happen, but there are things that you can do now inside your organizations that can have a significant impact on, on our progress, both within your organization, but also they can have a significant impact on society as a whole. So I would say let's leverage this and continue to push Congress and others to um, to act more on some of those other really important issues that are impacting the African American community. But at the same time, let's allow this to propel us and leaders and businesses take this as an opportunity to assess where you are in your organization and your efforts around um, addressing systems and policies and practices that you have influence over that you can change that can make a positive difference and, and have a positive impact on the African American community. Thank you both uh, for sharing that. Um, remember everyone in our viewing audience, feel free to drop questions in the chat. Uh, Paul, you referenced the word postpone perfection uh, in your conversation. And uh, can you expand upon that a little bit? Uh, well, in this work and even, you know, working with organizations, um, there is a tendency, how many times have we been told that it's not the right time yet? You know, it, things will change in time. Um, as if there's going to be this perfect moment in time that everything will just change for us. And the fact of the matter is, is that we have to be busy now and progressively moving forward now, whether it's a, you know, one step ahead, a mile ahead, how let's keep moving towards our desired state in which we all will benefit from. So the progressive improvement, which was passed on by a mentor of mine and not postpone perfection is something I, I've lived by. And I think we should embrace it in, in this area that we're talking about right now. Uh, thank you for doing that. And uh, a lot of uh, folks have put in this question, how do you celebrate Juneteenth? And then any tips on how organizations can celebrate Juneteenth? Sandra, we'll go with you first. Sure, yeah, well, I, we certainly make a big deal of it in our home, you know, so it's something that we talk about and we reflect on. So I start there um, and then we seek out opportunities to get engaged in fun activities uh, in the community. And I know there are a few things that are happening right here in Grand Rapids. Um, there's skating, I think that's happening today that's been uh, uh, facilitated by um, experience Grand Rapids, so we get involved in activities. But also when you go back to, you know, I think about Paul's comment earlier about this idea of an inclusive economy, you know, we are also intentional uh, in our own 
family about uh, always supporting black owned businesses, um, but very specifically during Juneteenth, making a, an extra effort to go above and beyond and encouraging that same thing with some of my peers and colleagues in our workplace here at the Cultural Intelligence Center. So uh, in terms of economic bottom line, providing support, you know, educating uh, my children and others uh, that I have relationship with um, and, and engaging in, in fun activities to celebrate the, the positive side of this big event or big day. Anything to add to that, Paul? No, I, I you know, my, uh, my worlds have, have, was a perfect colliding by me being able to do this, uh, um, this panel as I speak from Atlanta, Georgia, um, with my family uh, and seeing my grandkids who I haven't seen for over a year and a half. And uh, my daughter and my son-in-law, uh, even last night, we, we made an intentional effort of recalling uh, and looking at pictures of, of, of our family and just you know valuing the journey that, that we've taken to, to this point. And I'm, I'm looking at, you know, my grandkids and I'm just saying, how blessed am I, you know, to still be here and still be able to um, celebrate the legacy of my family and knowing the journey that they had to, to, to be a part of this country was not easy, but to be able to now say, and we all should say, you know, and, and present that we're here now, we remember you, we're going to reflect you I and mean, reflect your, your contributions to this, to this, uh, to this country. Um, into into our into our lives that we're experiencing right now. So, uh, thank you for sharing. Um, one thing you talked about when you were speaking, the only thing that popped in my mind is being intentional um, mm -hmm. about you know what we do, the information we share, becoming more aware. Um, anyone that's attended uh, any time I facilitate, I usually end up saying a few statements. Intentionality is one of them, and the other one is familiarity brings about awareness. And that's what we're doing today is we're, we're, we're making people familiar and more aware about things uh, in our community. I uh, have a next question here um, that uh, wants your, the panelists to talk more about the history of slavery in Texas and other US territories and the delayed emancipation of enslaved people. Um, you know, and then how does that lead to deflection and denial? Go ahead, Paul. Uh, I was going to defer to you first <laughs> from the history standpoint, and then I'll follow up. OK, I want to make sure I fully understand the question. Can you repeat it again, Ken, for me? Absolutely. Uh, someone is asking the panelists to talk more about the history of slavery in Texas and other US territories and the delayed emancipa em emancipation of enslaved people. Um, and is there a tie in to that in uh, white deflection or white denial? Yeah, again, I think I go back to some of the comments that I made earlier when you look at the, the magnitude of several pieces of what happened. So not only did you have you know, people in Texas in particular who uh, had to wait two and a half years before uh, they heard the news that they were free. Uh, so that's massive right there. Uh, and then beyond that, again, understanding that just because they were told that, the things didn't magically turn around overnight. Um, so there was a, a process and there was resistance. And so just thinking about uh, the implications around, you know, how do we now turn things around and give them opportunities and, and transition them from slaves to uh, employees that are actually being compensated. That was a long and lengthy process. And I think we can we could argue that you probably saw elements of that in every state, you know, across the country. Um, and then um, you have this element of while we say now we're free from slavery, again, there were these other forms of oppression put in place. <laughs> so, um, and, and they were oftentimes, you know, you, we use different names or, you know, we covered it up, but it was the intent was still the same to hold people back. And so you've got this long history of that bringing us all the way up into, you know, today. Um, and, and then we think about the implication that that has for us as individuals and how that has shown up in our organizations. So again, it, it's just been ongoing. And I think just acknowledging that and, and then really educating ourselves around when we look at the current disparities and the current inequities, they did not just happen overnight. And they are not because you have one culture group that's not, um, that's lazy or that's not as hardworking as other. 
that is a that is an indirect relationship to history and not just past history going back to the 1800s, but a recent history. So, you know, you've just got this long stream of, of things that have brought us to where we are today, and uh, which is why we have so much work to do. Thank you. Yeah, I would agree. Just that's totally spot on. Um, I would just add in regards to Texas, it's so interesting. I, I was listening to NPR and they were reviewing a book called Forget the Alamo. And the point of the book was the fact that it's really an example of how even our history was manipulated uh, to downplay the impact of slavery um, on, on our history and the development of our country. Even when we're, we're regarding the Alamo as this valiant and noble event um, uh, for Texas, the, the bottom line, if you read the book, the, the, a key part of the conflict was over uh, Texas intent to extend and to continue slavery. Um, and uh, it, it was just uh, mind blowing to, to really hear the, 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 the history behind that. And the fact is, is that, you know, when we look at the fact that every, it said everyone is free except when you commit a crime, which was another code for uh, or strategy to say, well, we can still get this free labor by, you know, manipulating the legal system and the laws to incarcerate African Americans, and everybody knows about Thirteenth, right? So, you know, th this this all is is an opportunity for us to align, um, you know, this history the right way and in truth. So. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, thank you for that. So one, uh, I'm seeing the chat here, uh, a lot of engagement. People have dropped resources in the chat. So those of us watching, feel free to grab those resources um, as well. And, uh, and I'll share, you know, one thing, and, and we do have time for maybe one uh, or two more questions. And I think about my personal experience uh, and why I think it's important to have these conversations. So uh, my undergraduate degree is from an HBCU. I went to Kentucky State University, and I'll date myself a little bit. When the movie Amistad came out, mm. I never heard of that story when you have a former president defending slaves uh, about, you know, and in, in the, in the proper things. And my question as a young adult was, why am I just not hearing about this story? So I think it's important for us to learn about what shaped this country and for me to, to, to recognize uh, the contributions of people that look like me and the descendants of slaves, you know, in this country. So we talk about Juneteenth, which is now going to be a buzzword, uh, you know, before that. And, uh, and you know, when we had the conversation earlier that, you know, it was the one to hundred year anniversary of what happened in uh, Oklahoma, you know, with the, with the massacre there about Greenwood. So having these conversations, again, familiarity brings about awareness. So I, again, want to thank each of you for sharing your perspectives on that. Um, Sandra, I have a question specifically for you. Someone had asked, can you expand upon how organizations can take actions now what are some specific examples uh, that that you know that can be considered? Yeah, thank you. And I, I did see that question, and I, I noticed the word. You know, what are some things that are not the typical things? And um, I think uh, rather than think about typical, I think there are some things that are important that we have been talking about, and the need to do them hasn't changed. Right. So I think it's perfectly fine for you know organizations to you know decide to. Um, allow their employees to have the day off. And as Paul, Paul talked about earlier, you know, when you compare that to if they're worrying about the, you know, the economy of that, just think about the contribution that African Americans have made. Um, but I think very specifically, it, it, we have to get beyond awareness and sensitivity. You know, it's great to have the conversations. This is an, a very important conversation. I'm learning a lot and I think it's, it's fantastic. But we have to then go back and say, okay, so let's do some honest, reflection on where we are as an organization, you know, and how are we really making sure that our systems and our policies and our practices are supporting and serving as a benefit to this work versus a barrier. 
And so that is, that's the crux of it to say, how are we making sure that whether it's our hiring processes, uh, our promotion processes, you know, how people are engaging, how inclusive we are in terms of certain people being in leadership roles, all of those key things um, are, are at the end of the day, that is what is going to make the real difference. And again, things like Paul suggested earlier, you know, do we have a supplier diversity program? How are we engaging in, in creating economic benefit and opportunities to, to African-American businesses. It's those specific and hard questions that are really are what's going to make the difference at the systemic level. And that's, that's the real change that has to happen. So awareness, sensitivity, that's great to place to start. But if we stop there, we have missed the point um, and we will be limited in our effectiveness. All right, thank you. Uh, we're at our time here. I'm going to ask one question. If you could summarize your experience today with one word, Paul, we'll go with you. We'll go to Sandra, and then Mandis will take us home. Uh, how would you summarize our, our conversation today here in one word, Paul? Inspirational. Thank you. Dr. Upton? Necessary. And uh, I will say um, needed. That was the word that I had, so I agree. Mandis. Please share a few words with us. Thanks, Ken. If I had to share mine, it would be um, encouraging. Um, I'm just so encouraged to see everyone on this call. This has been, um, this has been amazing. Um, thank you all so much for joining us today. And um, please join us one more time with a virtual round of applause for our amazing speakers, Mr. Paul Doyle and um, Dr. Sandra Upton. Um, we really appreciate you spending your morning with us. And I was so encouraged and so inspired by the words that our speakers shared today. Um, today, we've learned about the history of Juneteenth. We've learned about the business case for honoring it in our organizations. And um, we were challenged to stand as allies in the continued fight against systemic inequalities and, um, and how we can um, challenge that head on in our organizations. Um, we know that we've what we've talked about today is only you know one part of the story. It's one chapter in a rich history and legacy of the descendants of enslaved Africans in this country. And we know that even that is just one part of the larger mosaic of our um, history as shared Americans. So there are so many more stories to tell. There is so much more to learn um, as we continue the journey of advancing diversity, equity, and inclusion in our organizations and in our communities. So we would just encourage you all to um, return to your organizations and to your communities and continue the conversation and continue um, the work. So with that, I'll hand it back over to Ken. Thank you, Mandis. On behalf of the Grand Rapids Chamber, thank you for attending. Warner, Norcross, and Judd, you've indeed been a, a, a delight to partner with on this. And it's the beginning of something bigger. So stay tuned as we, we talk about these conversations going forward. It is our goal to have you out by 10 a.m. and we are on track to do that. So just a few things as we head toward conclusion. Uh, to continue engaging, we encourage you to check out future programming offered by the Grand Rapids Chamber. We have our diversity talent series coming up on July 20th. Uh, we have our West Michigan Minority Contractors After Hours event coming up. Also, we have an infinity group for our LGBTQ plus community, OutPro. Feel free to engage with the chamber and there is a program coming up in August centering around OutPro. The recording for today will be available, barring any um, you know, behind the scenes uh, recording issues. If we have a clean recording, you will indeed get that uh, information as well. And I also would like to highlight, if you have any follow-up questions, I know on behalf of Paul and Inclusive Performance Strategies, and behalf of Dr. Upton and the Cultural Intelligence Center, reach out to them, ask questions, and they will be happy to engage with you. And then also here at the Grand Rapids Chamber, you can reach out to me and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. The last thing I wanna share with you is you will receive a survey following today's event. We ask that you rate your overall experience. Uh, when you see that, it's on a scale of one to 10, 10 being the highest. Let us know how we did. Your feedback does not fall on deaf ears. We want to constantly improve as we move forward, having discussions around diversity, equity, inclusion. Thank you for spending your morning with us. Happy Friday, but more importantly, happy Juneteenth. We'll see you out in the community. Thank you. <laughs>